the Red Dragon. There's a financial meltdown going on of some of their banking, and it's starting to cascade. There's a ripple effect beginning with their protesting. They're protesting what's happening. This is a Red Dragon protest. It's interesting, this is a commercial real estate bank. A commercial real estate bank, which is very telling. Listen to them chanting. Things are shaking. Now this is something, let me look right at you, that we've prophesied for some time. The Spirit of the Lord has prophesied this to us, that there would indeed be some challenges in the Chinese economic standing. And that has to have, it has to be shaking the way that, that it is because there's challenges. There's these difficulties that are happening right in their foundation and even in their banking and economics. The reason is, is because they're on the verge of financial collapse. Now there's reserves, there's things taking place, but this has major ramifications and it will ramp up things like bricks. It will ramp up things that cause them to press uh, the, the United States, it will ramp up in a variety of areas, and you're seeing them wanting to have alliances. They're showing strength, but behind that strength is a lot of difficulty and issues happening. I'm going to show you in just a moment some prophecies I've released by the Spirit of the Lord, and they are all the way back from 2020, uh, talking about this exact issue. We're going to show that, but just before we do, if you would, please repost this, share this. This is a, a very serious topic because where this is going for that nation will affect this nation and many of the nations watching this broadcast right now. And we love all the nations, amen? Whatever your nation is and your precious land, we love you and bless you today. But I got to say this morning, there's some serious events wanting to manifest. So please repost this, please share this. Of course, I want to say thank you to our partners for helping us do this. And if you want to join the partner family, I'll tell you what, avoid all the scams, avoid all the mess, and please go to josephz.com and partner today so we can call you, we can love you, and we call our partners regularly. And if you're a viewer here, we love you and care about you regardless of partnership. But partnership helps us make the world go around. Also, please don't miss getting Demystifying the Prophetic. It has an accompanying manual. You can get it at josephz.com. This will give you peace, strength. It's like a compass for how to go through and discern these times we're living in and how God speaks prophetically. There's so much in this 450-page book. It'll be a blessing to you. Go to josephz.com. Get that today. It will bless you. I wrote it for you. Now, I, I got a lot to get into that I know is going to help you go through what's coming next. We have a saying, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. You know what's coming, and then you know what to do as it arrives. And in this case, it's this issue with the red dragon. We're seeing this issue, and they are trying to position themselves, posture themselves as the number one global superpower. They're trying to get there, and if we don't see and intervention of sorts, they could accomplish that even if it's because of desperation. And what do I mean by desperation? Well, there's going to be financial shaking and issues that they're already trying to cloak and they got a tourniquet on it, so to speak, and they're trying to work it out. But right now, I'd like you to go with me over to the screen here. And I want to show you some prophetic words the Lord spoke to us back in 2020. Let's just go through these, and then I want to talk and comment, give you some commentary on it. Let's watch this. The Lord will deal with the dragon who has persecuted my children. Their borders will become insecure through exposure and technology. There will be a shaking and an economic waiver that will cause them to consider their plan of action. I, the Lord, will expose the wickedness of their treachery. The people in God's underground church are my precious ones. Come on. They are his high servants. And great is their reward. For the joy set before them, they will receive a crown which no one can take away. I began to see tanks mobilizing, and we're going to see something not just in China, but other circumstances similar to Tiananmen Square, uh, a standoff. I saw something like that happening, and I believe the Lord is saying, prepare, because my church is going to lead the way in these next days. Okay, here's what I want to say about this. First of all, God will hear the prayers of his underground saints. Those underground saints in the Red Dragon Nation, they are some of the most precious, wonderful believers in the world. 
And they are there and they're praying. And I believe God is intervening on their behalf through so much of this. And we got to continue to pray and consider that. And I believe insecurity will come to the nation, even if it's on the behalf of those saints. So I'm praying for them and I'm standing in agreement with them, the persecuted church in that land. Let's go to the next clip. And this is important. I had a prophetic word that took place. Let's go to the beginning of this clip and let's watch it. Economic turmoil was what the Lord began to show me for the red dragon. And again, this is early on, a couple years back. Watch this. Economic turmoil is coming. An economic turmoil is coming. And through this economic turmoil, you will begin to see a turn of the tide and a turn of the events. Wow. You're going to see the red dragon rise. And I say unto you, says the Lord, I will strike their influence down. I will strike that influence down. It shall not rise. Not in this time. I will strike their influence down. And I will raise up the young lions and I will raise up my warriors. The dragon says he will win, but I say, no, the lion shall win. Amen. The lion of the tribe of Judah shall win. That is strong. I want to say something about this. There's a day coming that they will rise, but I believe the dragon will not win. The lion will win. Now we know prophecy is clear and there's going to be things that begin to manifest and unfold regardless of what we believe or see and all that coming towards the end of this age. And that is in Matthew 24, Luke chapter 21. The book of Revelation is packed with this. There is a day coming where a 200 million man army is going to stand up and they are going to march. And we know that out of the book of Revelation. We also know one of the signs of that time is that there will be the drying up of the Euphrates River. Now, it's kind of interesting that we were recently over at the River Euphrates at the headwaters, not downstream where it was dried up, but at the very beginning point of the Euphrates River. And I see these typologies, symbolic, prophetic moments that are happening because we're getting closer to the end of the age. And the Lord is wanting us to rise up and take our authority in this time. So this is something powerful. Let me look right at you as I begin to tell you that the Spirit of the Lord is going to make a way for you. I see an anointing for provision. I see an anointing for him breaking you out. I do believe God is going to deal with the adversaries that line themselves up against any nation that is standing for Israel. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you can't stand with Israel. You can't do that. I'll tell you what, I'd rather be on the Lord's side and really just take the word of God as it says regarding God's uh, nation, his special nation, and not be against that in any way. And right now, America teeters. It's teetering because of some of the ways uh, leadership has dealt with that nation, some of the ways that it has not stood its ground with it. But then also, on another regard, I believe there's like a, how can I say it, a line of credit, so to speak, because some of our, our former leaders really stood with them. You see, 45 stood with them. And when you see that happening, there's like a line of credit that begins to happen for that, that action. And I believe America is benefiting off that line of credit. I believe America is benefiting off the fact that Roe v. Wade was overturned on a federal level. And I believe we're in the valley of decision. We're in an hour where we're, we're, we're given opportunity when the current Manchurian who's standing in office says, hey, or you know, the, the upcoming potential leaders uh, of the wrong side of things are saying, gee, if we get in, we're going to overturn that Roe scenario. We're going to overturn it back to how it was. And I believe the Lord is watching very closely what this nation will do. And it's not even necessarily God just acting to bring judgment, terrible things, but it's a sowing and a reaping. You can't sow that kind of wickedness into a land, into the soil, into the spirit, so to speak, by snuffing out millions and millions of lives and then just saying, well, that's just how it is. No, I'm telling you, God hears that and he sees it. And there was a, a holding back. So Israel, Roe v. Wade being held back, some of this has given us a moment of mercy. Mercy. So the nation can get to another moment. Now, I believe that mercy has a season on it. And I think it's going to be involved with how we handle this upcoming cycle. And it's really serious. It's something we've got to consider. Allison. Hey. What do you think? I think that all this is going to work out for our good. Do you? I do. Is that what you sense in the spirit? Yeah, I think even though there's a lot of like a lot of I don't want to say fear going on. Uh-huh. 
But I, I overall, I just keep hearing it over and over and over again in my spirit that the, this is going to turn for our good. Really? Yes. I hear that too. That everything is like just again and again and again, everything is going to work out for our good. And I know what God has made promises to us personally. Oh yeah. And I know that he is, he is a God who does not go back on his word. That's right. And he so does not. I know with this that God keeps his promises and so even though there's a lot going on, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of shaking, I truly believe that uh, we were meant for this time and it is going to work out for a good and everything is going to be okay. Even in the middle of everything not going to be, not being okay. Right. It is going to be okay because he's got us and we're his kids. And so, and because of that, um, I truly know, I sense in my spirit and my heart that even though there's a lot of shaking Everything will work out for our good. I sense that also. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 9 very quickly. Revelation chapter 9. I want to look at this very quickly because I, I believe the red dragon has such a large part to play. And, you know, one of the things, and you should get this teaching. I have a teaching called uh, USA in Bible Prophecy. USA in Bible Prophecy. Um, and I deal with this issue extensively in this teaching. USA in Bible Prophecy. You can get it at josephz.com in the store and... It's all there. But if we could, let's go to Revelation chapter 9. And let's go to verse 15 very quickly. Revelation 9, verse 15. I want to get a running start at where we're going here. Revelation 9, 15. Look at this. Revelation chapter 9, verse 15. Um, you can see that happening. Let's go yeah. all the way up to verse 13. Verse 13. I want to get a running start here. Yeah. It says in verse 13, now this is kind of jumping right into a revelatory futuristic scenario mm -hmm. that's happening. Now, here's the thing with Revelation, the book of Revelation. The word revelation itself means a apocalypse or a revealing. Apocalypse doesn't mean the end of the world. Many people say, it's the apocalypse. Well, the apocalypse in the Greek means a revealing, a peeling away, a pulling back of the cover, show you something that's concealed. That's what the apocalypse means, a revealing. It doesn't mean the end of the world. So people use that term, and I get the popular culture meaning of it, but that's not what apocalypse means in the Greek. It means revelation. I'm showing you something. You're going to see something hidden, and I'm going to reveal it to you. But when we're looking at this through that lens, we recognize in Revelation chapter 9, verse 13, it says, Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, verse 14. Having saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release, oh man, the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Now, some people speculate that means under it, near it, but they're at that river. It's the location. Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Some people believe it's in the ground in gloomy dungeons, but this is what the scripture says. Verse 15. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill. Look at this. One third of mankind. One third. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's a lot of, a lot of uh, carnage. Verse 16. Now the number of the army of the horsemen. Now here's, here's what you recognize is how they're going to do it. I believe this gives clarity on how they're going to do it in verse 16. So first of all, you see the four angels are released, and then it pivots in verse 16. It says, now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. John said, I heard the number of them. I heard the number. I heard the number of them. Verse 17 and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. Fire, smoke, and brimstone. Verse 18. And by these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of the mouths. Now, some people say, well, th this isn't talking about any kind of thing. This is talking about weaponry. Well, it could be. But again, there's a census plenier here. There's a deeper, fuller meaning. This is an apocalypsis, a revelation, meaning you're looking at this and it can be all, all of the interpretations in one snapshot. It could be 
The 200 million man army is China, and they're going to release all of these using the symbolism of the dragon, the way that, you know, their, their breastplates, their colors. You look at all their colors, you see, um, for example, what goes through the streets in the Red Dragon Nation during celebrations? Well, a dragon. But if you looked at that, the face of it looks like a lion. I, and it, it is a dragon, but if you look at it, it's got smoke coming out, and, they, and the revelator would say, my goodness, this looks like it's a lion with smoke coming out of its mouth. Really, it's a dragon. And he's just getting a vision of something that was happening. Now, could we be reaching and just adding to this? Not really. I think the symbolism is pretty clear. And it could be something entirely different than what we're seeing here. It could also be, or a combination of, smart weapons involved with this. Let's keep going. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. Verse 19. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents having heads and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind, verse 20, who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of their works of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. Now here's the point. Let's go all the way back up to verse 16. Verse 16, I believe, is giving an illusion or a compass or a point to, it's pointing at, now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. It's interesting that they were horsemen. Could this be a post-apocalyptic, using the popular culture for the term again, not just the revealing term, but it could be post-apocalypse difficulty that on the other side, that all technology has been kind of wiped out to some level to the point people are now battling again on horseback and they still have some tech and they're still able to do some things with smart weapons and all that. Well, a lot of people speculate because the Battle of Armageddon it says the blood will come up to the horse's bridle in that, in that valley. And so what you recognize is they're not talking about tanks and armaments. It's talking about horseback battles, which could lead some to believe that there could be a gigantic EMP burst, a solar flare, something where they take us back to practically the Stone Ages or Dark Ages in technology. And that's the kind of battle you begin to see in the end of the age. And 200 million men on a horseback going into battle is a very fearsome and concerning thing. And they will begin to bring plagues across the earth, and this could be involving technology that they still have working at that time. And there's a lot of speculation with this. But here's my point. Those four angels at the River Euphrates, it's interesting. I was there at the River Euphrates, as I was saying earlier. And it was... Um, it was kind of surreal being there because on my journey, I didn't know that we were going to be going there. Can we back up to the four angels in verse 14? The four angels in verse 14. It said, release the four angels who are bound. That means right now today, they are bound at the great river Euphrates. There's something very significant about this. Very significant. And when the river Euphrates dries up, it says the kings shall come across the landscape. It, it's a serious thing. Do you realize that, Allie? Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a serious thing because what can take place is the Lord is saying that he wants to bring clarity. Mm -hmm. He wants to bring clarity to what people have been prophesying and yet for us to interpret what's happening as a sign of our time. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just looking here. I'm looking at things uh, even regarding the review of Euphrates and us being there. Yeah. And we recognize all these things that are happening. But we need to know that the Lord is not shocked with what's happening. He's not taking back by what's happening. Right. Um, but in Revelation chapter, I believe, earlier in chapter 16, let me go there. Okay. I actually did have a question. Yeah, go ahead. And it might, it might be a dumb question. I don't know. Yeah. But um, when it talks about the river will be dried up and they will be released. Yes. Um, could that be something where it's, 
uh, like a supernatural release, like the f- prop- prophecy fulfillment. Yeah, like it absolutely an is. action happened that supernaturally released a reaction. It, it really where is. Where they're able to I, So manifest. there's a thing that happens when the river dries up. No, they could be related and it might not be related. Okay. So the river drying up is, um, well, let, let's look at the scripture. Let's let the Bible describe yes, it. Yes, please. <laughs> In Revelation chapter 16 and verse 12, let's take a look at this. Revelation 16 and verse 12. Mm-hmm. It says, then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up. And this is interesting. So that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared, might be prepared. Mm-hmm. And then it goes on to say in verse 13, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, verse 14. And they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. And behold, Jesus said, I'm coming as a thief. I like this, though. He doesn't come as a thief to believers. Mm. I personally believe we won't be here during this time. This is now in the great tribulation, in the end times, not the last days. Verse 15, um, uh, excuse me, yeah, verse 15, it says, Blessed is he who watches. It goes on to say, Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. There's something about this watching before the catching away of the saints and after wherever your eschatology is. But here's what I want to say. I find it interesting. When the great river Euphrates dries up, this could coincide with the four angels being released that are bound there. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Doesn't say. It's not clear. And it could coincide with when this happens, the 200 million man army is released. It doesn't say perfectly. It's not clear. These could be two different events. Maybe they're related. Mm -hmm. But then it goes into verse 13, verse 13, where it talks about this unique thing. And this is something I want to say, and I'm getting a little further down the road than than, uh, maybe somebody was ready for today, but I want you to see this. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, of the devil. I believe this picture of frogs, they look like frogs coming out. I believe has it could have symbolic things involving water. It could have symbolic things spiritually involving a lot of things. But I also believe these frogs, when I'm looking at that, scripturally speaking, I believe these frogs could be what people look at and consider aliens, the little green fellas. It could be that, that spirit. I put that in my book, uh, Servants of Fire. And, and if you haven't read Servants of Fire, you need to read Servants of Fire. You can get it right now at josephz.com. I deal with angelic warfare. I deal with angels and their activity and how things operate. And you need this book in your library, Servants of Fire. Get it at josephz.com. And I'll tell you, I get into a lot and I deal with this exact scripture in that book. But when you're looking at this, it begins to talk about out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. I believe this could also involve a false alien invasion when these four angels are released and so many things are taking a place around the earth. Didn't you have a word about frogs? You know, I did release a word about frogs or it was a frog brand. I don't know that it's related to this scripture, right. but I did see a word about it. Yeah. And that word was released and people started emailing us like wild. Did you know there's, uh, I think Gates owns a food company or some kind of thing that has the frog brand on it. Right. And there was a number of these things where it was happening and there was um, a frog brand of a sports team in Texas. Yeah. And some of these things. And so I'm watching that because I get these words mm-hmm. and then I have to let it interpret. I got to watch right. it for a while. Yeah. I, I didn't think it was connected. It just reminded me of you had a word about it's frogs. True. And so I was like, wait a minute. And so, yeah, that's really interesting. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that out. You're welcome. So I believe this, I believe China's role, the red dragon, let me look right at you. I believe China's role in the red dragon, what's happening is that they are a major catalyst in the end times, no matter how you cut this. Now the underground church in China and the people of China are precious. We love them. We love you. But the system that's trying to be there is one of dominance, control, trying to take over. And I believe they are the 200 million man army. I believe there could be a lot of things when you look at these scriptural shadows and you try to put it all together, that they could indeed be a part of this last days or end times global extinction extinction of one third of humanity. 
they could be involved in that through those angelic wickedness, those angels that are released that will empower this type of destruction. In the meantime, I sense right now for the red dragon and what's happening. Before we get to all that, I believe God is making a way because we are the red, white, and blue, this nation, many precious nations that support Israel and stand with Israel. I believe clearly there's going to be a buoyancy for those that stand in covenant with the Lord God. That's why I teach this USA and Bible prophecy. Now, at face value, and certainly even with scholars and study, you don't see the, the USA mentioned in the Bible. Prophetically, though, right in the middle of the word Jerusalem is the word USA. Now, I know that that's just um, a leap, but I'm saying it because I do believe America's future and destiny is dependent on how it stands or treats Israel. And how America will fare against the red dragon depends on how it treats Israel. Because we will either be connected to the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or disconnected from it on a national level. Now, the body of Christ is very different. We're blessed coming, blessed going. That's us. And even on a bad day, we're anointed to be the best there is. But nations and how they stand and what they do has a great impact on what happens. Who they align with, how they align is massive. And it's very, very serious. So when I teach on USA and Bible prophecy, I go through everything from Babylon to the Antichrist all the way up to current modern day. And it's, and it's a couple hours of teaching. And you finally get to the point where I make the argument that America could last depending on how it treats and how it relates to Israel. It's serious. And, and there's some innuendos in Scripture that you could look at, speculate, just look at. And it's something to consider. And I believe the Lord wants to bring a season of longevity, one more round, before another generation has to decide what they're going to do with their time. We are in the valley of decision right now. And God's going to make a way for you. You know, I'm not saying these things to bring fear or trepidation. But I'm saying these things to prepare you, to strengthen you. I had a vision back in 2020. I'll never forget. I was in the mountains of Colorado. I was in the mountains and I had this vision. And I began to see in the vision this uh, moment. I looked and I saw the United States and I saw an angel symbolically. And the angel was named red, white, and blue. And those were the colors on the angel. Giant angel standing on the land. One foot on the land, one foot in the sea. And the angel was alone. I'll never forget this. It came to me. Suddenly after that had happened, I'm looking at that same vision and I began to see in addition to that angel being alone named red, white, and blue, that angel was going to stand or fall depending on its proximity to another angel. And I saw an angel that was blue and white, the white and blue angel. And the white and blue angel was standing across from it, away from it. And it was a decision. Will the red, white, and blue angel unite with that angel? Will the red, white, and blue angel fight together with that angel? Or will it abandon that angel? And that angel represented Israel. And I believe right now, we have an opportunity as a nation to see what we're going to do with the white and blue angel. And the hand of God is on your life. And the Lord Jesus is making a way for you and your family and your children. You don't have to fear the mess that's to come. I actually believe that there's a judgment released against the red dragon. I believe there's judgment coming against some of these nefarious, wicked leaders behind the veil. Not the people. We love the people. The people need the gospel. And everybody, whether they're the people or leaders in these high places, even the elites, they need the gospel. And we're here to give it to him in any way we can. But I want to say to you, the Lord, he's a God of covenant. And as long as we stand with that nation of Israel, I believe the Lord will begin to rebuke the red dragon and we will see longevity. If we don't, I believe the Lord will rebuke us and difficulty will come at a high level. And I just wanted to share this today because I believe things are changing, shaking, rattling and rolling. We're watching it right before our eyes. Who would have thought we'd be in this place? Well, we did prophesy it since 2020. The Lord shared it with us. But I want you to know something today. I shared a lot of things here 
I have more to give on this topic, but I just needed to release it because the Lord is giving a message of hope, even with the clarity that we're facing and the issues we're facing as a culture. We got another round coming. I don't care what happens next. God is with you. Don't you be afraid. I know the news is wild. I know we've never seen anything like this from the top to the bottom. It's just one day every day. There's pressure, change, all of it. Who knew? The Spirit knew. And God's going to protect you through it all. And I have a commitment to you that we're going to be here for you through all of it, through the whole thing. That's why we're here at the World Broadcast Center. That's why we're broadcasting. That's what we're doing what God called us to do. And we are looking for your help if you have it in your heart. If you purpose it, please partner with us. Join with us. Go to josephz.com. I hope you partner today so we can call you. And we want to, to welcome you to the partner family. We do it together. I hope you do it today. I really do. And if you are a partner in this ministry, can I just please say to you, thank you from the bottom of our heart, from the depths of our heart, thank you. And we love you so much. Jesus is Lord. And even on a bad day, you're anointed to be the best there is. And a man or woman with a revelation is not at the mercy of a culture gone mad with a thug, wicked, demon spirit. You're overcoming it all because Jesus has called you. Don't you shrink back. We've got a lot more to do, and we're going to be here through it all together, live in the morning like this, bringing it. Some days we'll get very prophetic. Other days we share the news. Other days we just begin to open the Bible. But I'm going to be here for you through all of it. We're a watchman ministry. And God's called us up higher. And that's why he sent me to the top of Pike's Peak. And we want to just keep people on the Word of God, the Bible, reading it, studying it. Clear-eyed, clear-minded reformers. We love you so much. If no one's told you today, we love you. Jesus loves you. Not a thing you can do about it. He loves you. I'd encourage you to repost this and share this everywhere. And I hope you become a partner today. We want to welcome you. We want to call you. And we call you regularly. Please don't go anywhere. And watch this part. I wanted to say a very special thank you to our partners. Partners, Thank you. Whether you've been a partner with us since the very beginning, the early days, or whether you've recently become a part of our partner family, I want to just simply thank you. Because of you, we're able to do so many things that we could never have accomplished without you working with us together. We're so grateful for you. And from the very bottom of our hearts, we wanted to say thank you to you. And we pray for you every day, and we stand with you, and we're believing God is going to do magnificent things through this partner family in the coming days. As a matter of fact, I have a promise from the Holy Spirit about it. Now, if you want to become part of our partner family, or you're even on the fence about it, thinking about it, I would encourage you to do so today by going to josephz.com, or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. Your partnership helps us advance the gospel, and it helps us fulfill the commission God's given us to raise up a million to reach a billion. That's lives. A million clear-eyed, clear-minded reformers to go win a billion. A million for a billion. And we know we can do it with your help. I believe with your help, we can impact the world. And we're looking forward to stepping into this at a greater capacity than ever before. I just want to say thank you and invite you to the family by going to josephz.com today. In today's world, there's a lot of noise and sensationalism by many claiming to hear the voice of God. They cite their predictions and their own experiences. Now, some are legitimate and some are not, but how do we know the difference? In some ways, prophecies become a mystified topic. Yet as global chaos is obviously increasing, it is imperative that we must hear and know the voice of God and true prophecy. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Demystifying the Prophetic. Now, it's taken me my whole life of walking through the Word of God and my own encounters and experiences to bring this to a place where we land at biblical truth and sound doctrine, yet absolutely celebrating the precious gift of prophecy. In this book, I deal with everything from trances and dreams, visions, 
deja vu even. Different types of prophets, we talk about it. We even cover the topic of false prophets. How do you determine who's true and who's false? We talk about discerning the times, navigating strange encounters. People talk about angels appearing to them, entities appearing to them, they hear voices. All of these unique things we begin to deal with at a very powerful level with this book. I bring you straight to the written word of God, and I want to say to you, isn't it time we understand the purpose of prophecy? After all, it is the spirit of prophecy that gives testimony to Jesus. It's time for results in your life. It's time for you to begin demystifying the prophetic. This book will help you. I promise you need this book. It'll break you out of containment. It'll bring you to a place of clarity and it will open up the understanding of the voice of God and prophecy functioning in your life by the written word of God. This is gonna really help you. I encourage you to get your copy today by going to josephz.com.